Welcome to the debrief, everybody. A lot going on, so let's get straight to it here. Rap artist ASAP Rocky has taken the stand in his own defense. The case against him in Sweden accuses him of assault, but he says he's not guilty and acted only in self-defense because he believed he was going to be attacked. Prosecutors say videos posted online by ASAP Rocky were edited to make the rapper look innocent. ASAP Rocky testified that he tried to avoid a fight. He said, we pleaded and begged and we said, look, man, we don't want to fight y'all. We don't want any more problems. We don't want to go to jail. We don't want to fight y'all. Please stop following us. He also testified that he told his attackers, I couldn't help but assume that these guys were affected by some kind of drug. Meanwhile, the accuser testified that he approached ASAP Rocky's group because he was simply looking for a friend. The accuser claims he had no idea who ASAP Rocky was and that members of ASAP Rocky's entourage carried bottles. Rocky's defense says video proves the group was not carrying bottles. This case resumes tomorrow. So with me tonight are attorneys Brian Wagner, Brian Buckmeyer, and Mike Korobanix. And we wanted to keep the mics in one room and the Brian's in another. So uh, we're, uh, we're not going to talk about my middle name, though, which is Mike. So that throws that theory off. Anyway, Brian Buckmeyer, you've been following this case. We've got a lot of conflicting testimony here. Yeah, so it's kind of a little bit crazy. ASAP Rocky took the stand along with the uh, ac accused or the complaining witness who's saying that he was assaulted by ASAP. From the complaining witness, he's saying, I was trying to find my friends. There was some sort of a scuffle. The, bo the bodyguard had allegedly um, attacked him, but neither of those two are being prosecuted. For ASAP, he's put out video to kind of combat the, the theory of what happened. He said he edited the video because he didn't want people hearing him say the N-word gratuitously. Uh, it's his own personal uh, social media, and he said he did so because TMZ had put out video and he wanted to put his own theory out there. Mike Korobanek, so when people start editing video and their defendants and they're posting it online, does that make them look guilty? And if so, how much weight should authorities give to that? And look, I realize we're talking about a case in Sweden. It's not the United States. Well, I always think it's difficult when people edit things that are later going to be used as evidence. And I, I think it shows some, some may tend to make it look as a consciousness of guilt that you knew what you did was wrong. What you're putting out there was a campaign and really isn't the truth you'd like to use in testimony in a trial. So, Brian Wagner, you're here with me in studio. So, um, as this thing rolls along here, we've got a defendant taking the stand and we have an accuser who some people say is a victim also taking the stand. This is a really interesting case. I wish we could watch it because it's not often that we see that combative testimony. And it's hard to judge who's telling the truth and who's not because a lot of times it comes down not so much to the words, but the body language. Yeah. But in this case, you're not worried about the body language. What you're worried about is what does the video actually show? And then either side that doesn't really adopt and argue that their case is supported by the video, you have to be skeptical of. And so if I'm the defense attorney, I'm taking that video and I'm running with it why it supports my facts. Okay, so what if the video is inconclusive? What if it's been edited? Do we have a final answer? Does the video speak volumes or does it speak very little? So I, I think the video always speaks volumes because it's contemporaneous. It shows what was happening at that very moment. So to the extent they're alleging a bottle was used, make sure the video doesn't show a bottle. Or if you're the prosecution, make sure the video does show a bottle. And that's really what you have to adopt. Exactly. Gentlemen, we'll be back to you in just a moment. Connecticut court documents, meanwhile, have revealed new evidence in the case of a missing mother. Jennifer Dulos disappeared more than two months ago. Her estranged husband and his girlfriend are charged with tampering with evidence. The documents say police have the bloody shirt they think Dulos was wearing when she was last seen. They also have mops and sponges with a little bit of blood. An attorney for the husband says Jennifer disappeared in a so-called gone girl scenario to frame him and prevent him from getting custody of their children. Verdicts in the case of a Florida man prosecutors say killed his family over an obsession with a webcam model. I'm told that you all have reached a verdict. 29-year-old Grant Amato was accused of sending a Bulgarian woman, known only as Sylvie, $200,000 from his parents' bank accounts so that she would keep talking to him. When his parents intervened and tried to shut down the so-called relationship, prosecutors say Grant Amato murdered his family. Here is the verdict. Count one, Margaret Amato. We, the jury, find the defendant guilty of first-degree premeditated murder. Verdict, count two, Chad Amato. 
We, the jury, find the defendant guilty of first-degree premeditated murder. Verdict, count three, Cody Amato. We, the jury, find the defendant guilty of first-degree premeditated murder. The jury also agreed that the defendant used a weapon. Brother Jason Amato, who was not hurt, dropped his head as the verdicts came down. His girlfriend and other members of the family sobbed in the gallery. The family sat with the prosecution, not with the defendant. And when he left the room, Jason Amato told Law & Crime he hated his brother Grant for what he did to the family. Family. The case now moves to a penalty phase beginning August 12th. Grant Amato could be executed if jurors agree on a punishment. Let's talk now about the result in this case. Mike Korobanix is in the newsroom for us because we're just out of chairs here in the studio. Mike, what do you think? Is this a just verdict in this case? I, I think the uh, I think the verdict is 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 just in this case. I think it was a, a tough case, but it really seemed no matter where you went with it, it <clears throat> all pointed back to money, and usually that's. The, not to sound corny, the root of all evil, but when you have a case with that, that amount of money and, and the scenario it was put forth, I think it was, a, uh, it was a strong case for the prosecution. I agree with that as well. Brian Wagner, you're here in studio with me. So what did you make of this? You've got these accusations involving this webcam girl from Europe, and even the defense was just saying, oh, you know, this is a really bizarre case, and I think the defense had a really hard time arguing its side of things during the closings, and I think that was kind of visible for the jury. Yeah, you have to assume that the jury takes their job very seriously. Whenever they're considering a murder charge, they give it the necessary thought it deserves. And so when they return a verdict of guilty, again, you have to assume that they considered all those facts and came back. Exactly, okay, so Brian Buckmeyer, that jury deliberated late yesterday. It was, what, 10, 11 o'clock or something like that when they came down with a verdict. They were at risk of being sequestered. It seems like they absolutely did not want to go to the hotel. But I have to bring the pictures back in because we have these pictures of the defendant brandishing all these weapons. And when pictures like that wind up in front of the jury, chances are no good will come from it. Because remember, the defense was saying early on, oh, he didn't have formal training with weapons. It seemed to me like that was disingenuous. Look at the pictures. Yeah, so you never want to put yourself out there as an attorney, whether on either side, uh, giving a statement that you cannot prove. It's kind of the same thing as my uh, esteemed colleague Brian over here. Uh, when one Brian says something, the other Brian has to co-sign it. Uh, if you're going to put out something and it can be combated by evidence, either be a video or a picture, you're kind of just hanging yourself. Exactly. We'll be back again to you gentlemen at the end of the broadcast. Meanwhile, a verdict has also been reached, we're hearing, in the trial of a Georgia husband and wife accused of murdering their two-year-old foster child. Joseph and Jennifer Rosenbaum face different degrees of murder and other charges over the death of Layla Marie Daniel. The judge agreed to remove a juror after a local newspaper reporter had a conversation with the juror at a nearby lunch stand. Deliberations, therefore, had to start from scratch yesterday morning. Again, we are hearing that a verdict has been reached. We're finally getting a signal in this. If you were watching the Law and Crime Network about 15, 20 minutes ago, you heard a verdict was coming in. We were waiting for this. Let's go into the courtroom right now, the judge on the bench. Uh, have the jury step into the jury box. We're waiting for things to get moving there in that courtroom in Georgia. Again, this is the case involving Joseph and Jennifer Rosenbaum, the death of Layla Marie Daniel, the young girl who authorities say was abused by that couple standing right there waiting to hear the verdict. And then ultimately the abuse 
possibly leading to a seizure and then leading to the death of little Layla Marie. It looks like the judge is back on the bench. Let's listen. Good. Are you the full person? I am. Would you please stand and state your name? My name is Jody Funderburg. Mr. Funderburg, uh, is the verdict form uh, filled out? It is. And is it signed and dated by you? It is. All right. Would you please publish your verdict to the court? In other words, read it. For count one, malice murder. We, the jury, find the defendant, Jennifer Michelle Rosenbaum, not guilty. Count two, felony murder. We, the jury, find the defendant, Jennifer Michelle Rosenbaum, not guilty. Count three, aggravated assault. We, the jury, find the defendant, Jennifer Michelle Rosenbaum, guilty. Count four, felony murder. We, the jury, find the defendant, Jennifer Michelle Rosenbaum, not guilty. Count five, cruelty to children in the first degree. We, the jury, find the defendant, Jennifer Michelle Rosenbaum, guilty. Count six, felony murder. We, the jury, find the defendant, Jennifer Michelle Rosenbaum, guilty. Count seven, aggravated battery. We, the jury, find the defendant, Jennifer Michelle Rosenbaum, guilty. Count eight, murder in the second degree. We, the jury, find the defendant, Joseph Michael Rosenbaum, guilty. Count nine, cruelty to children in the second degree. We, the jury, find the defendant, Joseph Michael Rosenbaum, guilty. Count 10, aggravated assault. We, the jury, find the defendant, Jennifer Michelle Rosenbaum, guilty. Count 11, cruelty to children in the first degree. We, the jury, find the defendant, Jennifer Michelle Rosenbaum, guilty. Count 12, aggravated assault. We, the jury, find the defendant, Jennifer Michelle Rosenbaum, guilty. We, the jury, find the defendant, Joseph Michael Rosenbaum, guilty. Count 13, cruelty to children in the first degree. We, the jury, find the defendant, Jennifer Michelle Rosenbaum, guilty. We, the jury, find the defendant, Joseph Michael Rosenbaum, guilty. Count 14, aggravated assault. We, the jury, find the defendant, Jennifer Michelle Rosenbaum, guilty. We, the jury, find the defendant, Joseph Michael Rosenbaum, guilty. Count 15, cruelty to children in the first degree. We, the jury, find the defendant, Jennifer Michelle Rosenbaum, guilty. We, the jury, find the defendant, Joseph Michael Rosenbaum, guilty. Count 16, aggravated assault. We, the jury, find the defendant, Jennifer Michelle Rosenbaum, guilty. Count 17, cruelty to children in the first degree. We, the jury, find the defendant, Jennifer Michelle Rosenbaum, guilty. Count 18, aggravated assault. We, the jury, find the defendant, Jennifer Michelle Rosenbaum, guilty. We, the jury, find the defendant, Joseph Michael Rosenbaum, guilty. Count 19, cruelty to children in the first degree. We, the jury, find the defendant, Jennifer Michelle Rosenbaum, guilty. We, the jury, find the defendant, Joseph Michael Rosenbaum, guilty. Count 20, aggravated assault. We, the jury, find the defendant, Jennifer Michelle Rosenbaum, guilty. Count 21, cruelty to children in the first degree. We, the jury, find the defendant, Jennifer Michelle Rosenbaum, guilty. Count 22, aggravated assault. We, the jury, find the defendant, Jennifer Michelle Rosenbaum, guilty. We, the jury, find the defendant, Joseph Michael Rosenbaum, guilty. Count 23, cruelty to children in the first degree. We, the jury, find the defendant, Jennifer Michelle Rosenbaum, guilty. We, the jury, find the defendant, Joseph Michael Rosenbaum, guilty. Count 24, aggravated assault. We, the jury, find the defendant, Jennifer Michelle Rosenbaum, guilty. Count 25, cruelty to children in the first degree. We, the jury, find the defendant, Jennifer Michelle Rosenbaum, guilty. Count 26, aggravated assault. We, the jury, find the defendant, Jennifer Michelle Rosenbaum, guilty. We, the jury, find the defendant, Joseph Michael Rosenbaum, guilty. Count 27, cruelty to children in the first degree. We, the jury, find the defendant, Jennifer Michelle Rosenbaum, guilty. We, the jury, find the defendant, Joseph Michael Rosenbaum, guilty. Count 28, aggravated assault. We, the jury, find the defendant, Jennifer Michelle Rosenbaum, guilty. Count 29, cruelty to children in the first degree. We, the jury, find the defendant, Jennifer Michelle Rosenbaum, guilty. Count 30, aggravated assault. We, the jury, find the defendant, Jennifer Michelle Rosenbaum, guilty. 
We, the jury, find the defendant, Joseph Michael Rosenbaum, guilty. Count 31, cruelty to children in the first degree. We, the jury, find the defendant, Jennifer Michelle Rosenbaum, guilty. We, the jury, find the defendant, Joseph Michael Rosenbaum, guilty. Count 32, aggravated assault. We, the jury, find the defendant, Jennifer Michelle Rosenbaum, guilty. We, the jury, find the defendant, Joseph Michael Rosenbaum, not guilty. Count 33, cruelty to children in the first degree. We, the jury, find the defendant, Jennifer Michelle Rosenbaum, guilty. We, the jury, find the defendant, Joseph Michael Rosenbaum, not guilty. Count 34, cruelty to children in the first degree. We, the jury, find the defendant, Jennifer Michelle Rosenbaum, guilty. We, the jury, find the defendant, Joseph Michael Rosenbaum, not guilty. Count 35, aggravated battery. We, the jury, find the defendant, Jennifer Michelle Rosenbaum, guilty. We, the jury, find the defendant, Joseph Michael Rosenbaum, not guilty. Count 36, aggravated assault. We, the jury, find the defendant, Jennifer Michelle Rosenbaum, guilty. We, the jury, find the defendant, Joseph Michael Rosenbaum, not guilty. Count 37, cruelty to children in the first degree. We, the jury, find the defendant, Jennifer Michelle Rosenbaum, guilty. We, the jury, find the defendant, Joseph Michael Rosenbaum, not guilty. Count 38, cruelty to children in the first degree. We, the jury, find the defendant, Jennifer Michelle Rosenbaum, guilty. We, the jury, find the defendant, Joseph Michael Rosenbaum, not guilty. Count 39, aggravated battery. We, the jury, find the defendant, Jennifer Michelle Rosenbaum, guilty. We, the jury, find the defendant, Joseph Michael Rosenbaum, not guilty. Count 40, cruelty to children in the first degree. We, the jury, find the defendant, Jennifer Michelle Rosenbaum, guilty. We, the jury, find the defendant, Joseph Michael Rosenbaum, not guilty. Count 41, aggravated battery. We, the jury, find the defendant, Jennifer Michelle Rosenbaum, guilty. We, the jury, find the defendant, Joseph Michael Rosenbaum, not guilty. Count 42, cruelty to children in the first degree. We, the jury, find the defendant, Jennifer Michelle Rosenbaum, guilty. We, the jury, find the defendant, Joseph Michael Rosenbaum, guilty. Count 43, aggravated battery. We, the jury, find the defendant, Jennifer Michelle Rosenbaum, guilty. We, the jury, find the defendant, Joseph Michael Rosenbaum, guilty. Count 44, aggravated assault. We, the jury, find the defendant, Jennifer Michelle Rosenbaum, guilty. We, the jury, find the defendant, Joseph Michael Rosenbaum, guilty. Count 45, cruelty to children in the first degree. We, the jury, find the defendant, Jennifer Michelle Rosenbaum, guilty. We, the jury, find the defendant, Joseph Michael Rosenbaum, guilty. Count 46, aggravated assault. We, the jury, find the defendant, Jennifer Michelle Rosenbaum, guilty. We, the jury, find the defendant, Joseph Michael Rosenbaum, guilty. Count 47, cruelty to children in the first degree. We, the jury, find the defendant, Jennifer Michelle Rosenbaum, guilty. We, the jury, find the defendant, Joseph Michael Rosenbaum, guilty. Count 48, cruelty to children in the second degree. We, the jury, find the defendant, Jennifer Michelle Rosenbaum, guilty. We, the jury, find the defendant, Joseph Michael Rosenbaum, guilty. Count 49, cruelty to children in the second degree. We, the jury, find the defendant, Jennifer Michelle Rosenbaum, guilty. We, the jury, find the defendant, Joseph Michael Rosenbaum, guilty. Dated this first day of August, 2019. All right. Thank you, sir. Would you please pass the verdict form to the sheriff's deputy who will give it to the parties who they can inspect it as well. The jury delivering a mixed verdict there against the Rosenbaums, a case involving accusations of the abuse of a little girl named Layla Marie Daniel. Bottom line here, a mixed verdict with a lot of guilties, a lot of not guilties, a lot of not guilties on the top charges, but the details are very important here because there were some extremely serious charges where by our analysis, we did hear guilty verdicts. This is gonna take a little more time to unwind because as you just heard, that flew by very, very quickly. Let's listen to the judge though. Agree, uh, have any objections to the form of the verdict? 
that one's safe. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, there has been a request from the defense of the jury be called. Uh, what this means is that I have to ask uh, each of you a few questions. And let me start with our four person. As I'll work my way across the top, and then across the bottom, and then back in the corner. Sir, please stand again and state your name. Jerry Funderburg. Mr. Funderburg, uh, the verdict that you published here in open court. Uh, this process of polling the jurors with a 49 count indictment is going to take forever. So we're going to back out of this and break down what we just heard. I'm joined by the panel yet again, speaking as to Jennifer Rosenbaum, the wife who most of the evidence at trial stacked up involving her. Keep that in mind. Here's where it boiled out. Malice murder, the, the top charge in the land in Georgia was a not guilty felony murder, not guilty, but aggravated assault guilty, guilty as to cruelty to a child in the first degree. That was also guilty. And there was another felony murder that was guilty. So the bottom line there is right off the bat, there were a lot of sighs and you heard the exclamation from the gallery, someone uttered out disbelief but the bottom line here is we've got a very serious serious charge racked up here uh let me start with uh with you brian buckmeyer here your reaction uh so i was very taken aback by the mixed verdict uh, i can see how they came to the conclusions on some of the charges especially with the top charges but i think for the most part it still spells a bit of a disaster for jennifer uh, as it stands with joseph i still think he's in a position where he's probably kicking himself thinking Maybe I should have had my own defense attorney. You know, that's a big question we've been debating for quite some time here on The Debrief and, of course, on the Law and Crime Network. Brian Wagner, uh, we do have a conviction on the notes that I'm getting. Again, the jury flew through that very quickly. We have a guilty on felony murder. That's, uh, that's life in Georgia as to Jennifer Rosenbaum. So, again, this is, uh, this is serious. This is serious. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, anytime you get convicted of anything, it's serious, let alone felony murder. In terms of this case, you know, the husband has to be wondering why I allowed my defense attorney to represent us both, because maybe they really did have conflicting defenses, as Brian Buckmeyer just said. Exactly. Mike Korobanix, we've been talking about this as well. I, I know you're still out there in the newsroom watching this along with us, getting uh, some of the uh, counts here as to Joseph Rosenbaum. We have a guilty for murder in the second. Uh, that is at least 10 years in prison in Georgia with a maximum of 30, and that's just on that charge alone. We also have cruelty to a child in the second degree as to the husband here, guilty of aggravated assault, guilty to uh, cruelty to a child in the first degree. So uh, again, it looks like uh, we're stacking up here by my read of the information that I'm getting uh, as to uh, a likely uh, likelihood of a life sentence here against the husband, Joseph, as well. <clears throat> Aaron, I, I didn't like this case from the start, and I still think this case is going to come back. I don't care if the Georgia law says you can waive that conflict. I think if this case makes it to the Supreme Court, they will say that this was just unfair, and it was unfair to both these defendants, not just the husband, but the, the mother as well. That th There is no way an attorney could have separated these defenses and compartmentalize what you need to hear and the spillover as to both. I just can't see how he wasn't in a conflict and how a judge allowed this to happen. Yeah, I don't know about you, Mike. Well, look, I do know because you just basically said, I don't think that I would have it in me to take a joint representation in a case like this. And, and everybody else that's sitting in, in here with me is, is nodding in affirmation. So, Mike, you wouldn't do it either, I don't think. Absolutely not. It, it's just a recipe for disaster. For, as to both defendants, you, you, you can't split your loyalty as an attorney. I don't care what their ethics rules say. I just think this was just bad from the beginning and just got worse. Brian Buckmeyer, we're watching emotion come out of the defendants. They have really not shown any emotion throughout this proceeding, at least that I've seen. Uh, and, and look, I know the camera's not on them all the time, and I know that I'm not there, but now suddenly uh, we're seeing the husband break down, the wife being a little bit more stoic, uh, so many tears falling in the gallery. It's just heartbreaking all the way around. 
Yeah, so you have to think this is the crescendo to an entire trial. And and sometimes you get caught drinking your own Kool-Aid and thinking, hey, like the case is going well, I think it's gonna go well, it's gonna go well, it's gonna go well, and you get the verdict and like, it's not going well. It all falls apart. And I think regardless of what the verdict was, whether it was a full acquittal or an absolute guilty of all charges, you're gonna get this reaction. So many people watching, hoping for justice in this case. It's tough when you have a case like this with a young uh, girl, just a couple of years old, said to be a victim by the state. Now the jury agrees with that. Uh, ultimately not winners in a case like this. We're going to wrap things up here, though, on the debrief uh, and on the Law and Crime Network. Thanks very much to the panel. Two Brians and one Mike, uh, one person uh, with a middle name, Mike. We're going to be back with more live coverage of this case tomorrow here on the debrief.